Hi everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to this week's video, which will be a week in my teacher life. If you are new around here, my name's Tressa and I'm a sixth grade teacher in Alberta, Canada. I make lots of teaching and learning videos here on YouTube and I would love to have you consider subscribing and following along. <laughs> Happy Monday, what is up? I just got to school. I'm running a little bit later than usual. Okay, first off, I cannot be the only person who does this. My husband, it drives him absolutely crazy. It used to drive him more crazy when anytime we like drove together somewhere because I would be in his vehicle or my vehicle and like my coffee would be spilling everywhere. Anyway, I always fill my coffee to like the absolute brim, like nothing else will fit in the cup when my coffee has been poured. So then when I go to put the lid on, the lid doesn't fit and it doesn't bother me. I'm like, you know what? I'll take a few sips. Eventually the lid will fit. But am I the only person who does this? Because I think it's a survival skill, but apparently it is a problem to others. Anyway, this is apparently how much coffee, like as much as my head that requires me to get through this Monday, which, okay. Um, I was laughing in my last video. It was like this coffee mug was like everywhere and I couldn't find a picture or anything to make my thumbnail where it wasn't like a giant pink coffee mug, but I'm pretty sure that's just teacher life. So it's okay. Anyway, I am in a good mood this morning. I feel relaxed. I had a really good weekend, pretty chill. Like I didn't do very much. Um, I came in for a little bit yesterday. I actually wanted to put up my collaborative Canadian flag, but the laminator was out of lamination and the office was locked, so I couldn't replace it. So I have it made um, and eventually, whether I get the chance to replace the lamination or somebody else does, I will get that laminated hopefully this week and put up. Um, it looks really good. It's one of my like favorite things to put up. I just love like anytime the kids can help you to like create something in your classroom and like decorate. Anyway, I have some plans for this week. I am kind of taking it like, I don't want to say day by day because I'm tackling like chunks of work, but and mentally I'm kind of taking it day by day because it's just a lot right now, um, especially in science and social. So I've got some more like sciencey experiment stuff behind me because I'm going to do another demonstration today. This one will be about how air takes up space. I am going to spend some time with the social studies textbook because I'm feeling like unfamiliar with where to go next. My next goal is kind of to tackle the um, Charter of Rights and Freedoms, but I don't know whether to move on from democracy like right away or if I need to spend some more time on it. It's always like you can't really know until you try, but that's kind of where my head's at with that. I want to, in a language arts, dive into author's purpose. So I use that like PI acronym, um, persuade, inform, and entertain. So I want to dive into that. Um, this year the kids have to get good at story writing and writing newspaper articles so kind of two very different like types of writing so that's what i want to get into with that and with math we will just be carrying on with our place value unit so yeah there's lots on the go and i'm excited it's our first five day week we do have an early dismissal on wednesday which probably will be like a relief come Wednesday, <laughs> but I am feeling good for a Monday. So I'm happy about that. I can't complain. Our supervision schedule is going to be kind of back on track this week. Just stuff like that. I guess kind of everything like falling into place like that second, third, fourth week of school is kind of when you start to like hit a bit of a groove. So I am looking forward to that. The chaos in like the beginning of the year can be kind of fun, but it can also be a lot. <laughs> so I am looking forward to just calming down, you know, being with my class, kind of understanding what's going on in the school, um, figuring out my new role, all that stuff. So I am also um, pumped because we have our first cross country tryout today. I'm the cross country coach and it's it was one of my favorite sports to do as a kid, like from grade three all the way up to grade 12. So. I really like doing it with the kids. 
um, but their first tryout is today at morning recess, so that will be um, exciting. Right now I have 28 kids on my list, which is a pretty good cross-country team. Um, a lot of the kids didn't get to participate in sports and stuff because of COVID, so they're eager to get going. Anyway, there are a few things I want to do before my kids join me in the classroom this morning, but I wanted to say hi to you, open up the vlog, and yeah, my goal again will just be to pick up the camera throughout the week, share anything exciting, interesting, horrible perhaps, and um, hopefully you'll get something from this vlog, whether it's connecting with me or a lesson idea, but yeah, I appreciate you being here supporting me, and I will catch up with you soon. Hey guys, we survived the day. I think I would say barely, though it was a long one and it was a loud one. Sometimes when the kids leave, it's like my ears are echoing. <laughs> anyway, <sighs> I'm getting my classroom economy set up next week and I know that will help with some of like my classroom management stuff. I always like to kind of figure them out for a little bit, um, give a little bit perhaps more like freedom just you know give them the opportunity to test me out a little bit and then we kind of you know within like second third week of school we're really cracking down as we get into the learning so I am definitely starting that this week but next week will be where we actually have like rewards and fines that come into play anyway it's just a lot I just feel like my brain's a little bit overloaded I um, explain this last week as well. It's just a different level of like comfort when you really don't know what you're teaching. I feel like I'm spending time at home trying to learn what I'm going to teach the next day and then I just don't feel as confident when I step up in front of the group and it's just kind of a foreign feeling after having taught the same grade for so many years. Anyway, I know I'll figure it out. Um, we started our day with a really fun game though that I actually wanted to share with you. I saw an Instagram reel about it this weekend and I watched it and I decided to implement it. I don't remember where I saw it though. I was on like, I don't know what it's called on Instagram, but like the reels page where you see like people that you're not actually following. Anyway, really cool and would be applicable for like any grade level. So I wanted to share with you. So I had my kids in groups of four. Um, I had 24 kids, so it was like perfect. Um, six groups of four and what you need to do you can either write it on a sticky note and pass the sticky note to the kids or what I did was I just wrote it on a sticky note and showed the sticky note to my kids so depending on your age level and even on your trust because it's important that they keep whatever's on the sticky note a secret so if I have a group of four I showed the sticky note to the first person and the third person the second and fourth did not see the sticky note. So my first example was storm. So I showed them the word storm. I showed the first person and the third person, the second and fourth did not see it. You give them a piece of paper and you start your timer. The first person starts drawing. So they are trying to illustrate the word that they saw. Once 30 seconds is up, I shout out pass. They pass the paper to the second person who doesn't know what the picture is supposed to be and they have to continue the drawing, kind of, you know, unguided. They have no idea what they're supposed to be drawing. Once the 30 seconds is up, they pass it to the third person who does know what it's supposed to be and they can, you know, fix some of the mistakes. I said no erasing. You could have erasing if you wanted, but I feel like that kind of wrecks it a little bit. Um, and then the pattern continues. I did two rounds the first time, three rounds the second time. So they kind of completed their drawing the second time. Anyway, I know with grade six, I need to come up with more like complicated drawings. So one of my students actually suggested something like pencil sharpener, like something very kind of difficult to draw unless you're an artist, which I do have some artists in here, but um, unless you're an artist, it's pretty difficult to draw a pencil sharpener, whereas Storm became pretty obvious. It was nice to start with obvious ones when you were first beginning the game. Anyway, it was kind of cute, the um, images that they came up with in the end, the things that they were actually able to draw and the things that they really struggled with. So really fun. 
and you could make it like very quick. It could just be like a five minute brain break or it could be like 10 to 15 minutes. You can do several rounds. You could switch up the groups. However, you want, kind of want to structure it. I did it like to begin the day just to get everybody kind of laughing, you know, loosened up at the beginning of the day because I find they kind of come in just like sleepy and groggy and it's this whole thing. So it's nice to kind of loosen them up to begin the day. And then we were able to like engage in more discussion in our writing activity. Um, I started talking about pie today in writing. So persuade, inform, entertain. Um, author's purpose essentially is kind of where we're starting. Um, beginning with the end in mind. I know on the PAT they're going to have to write a story and a newspaper article. So the other one, I really like to touch on persuade because I feel like it is kind of like a life skill. We were talking about how like in any job you need to be able to persuade others. Um, I shared like as a teacher, I might need to write a persuasive email to my boss, the principal. Um, I also need to use tactics of persuasion with the kids sometimes. So that kind of thing. I think it's important for them to persuade, inform, entertain. Um, tomorrow we're going to sort through some writing examples that I have and they have to determine which things are persuasive, um, informative, and for entertainment purposes. So that's where we're heading with that. We did a math minute. We played a math game with place value and we did an experiment. We actually did two more demonstrations with science um, on the back table and maybe I will grab those and go over those with you right now. All right, so for today's demonstration, the one that I did, we did two. I did one and then the kids had the chance to do one. For the first one, you need two of these bigger like pop bottles and then two balloons. I just put them like on the top and you have to make sure the air is sealed. And one of the balloons, sorry, one of the pop bottles has to have a hole cut in it. So I kind of had like the controlled and then like the variable. So for the controlled one, when you blow in, you are unable to blow up the balloon because there is air in the bottle that's taking up space. So there's not enough space for the balloon to inflate. With the one that has the hole where we've manipulated the variable. <laughs> you are able to inflate the balloon because the air can leave through the hole, making room for the new air that is being put into the balloon. So this was a little demonstration that I did. It wasn't easy, it's kind of gross when the air comes back up in your face, but that's okay. I just didn't want the kids to do this one because then you need like several pop bottles, lots of balloons, um, you're kind of worried about germs, that kind of thing. So I will show you the one that I had them do. So the ones that the, the one that the kids did, you need a clear glass. I would also recommend a clear bowl, but I just didn't have enough clear bowls for every group. And then you need to take scrapped paper and put it, kind of roll it up into a ball and put it in your cup so that it takes up space at the bottom of the cup and it doesn't fall out easily when you flip the cup upside down. Your bowl needs to be filled with water. This one is not anymore. We emptied it, but I'll show you anyway. So then it's the experiment where the kids had to plunge the cup upside down into the water and the um, determine whether their paper got wet or not. And they found out by manipulating the direction, by manipulating the speed, the force, that they really couldn't get the paper soaking wet because of the air being in the cup. So they had a lot of fun with that. Everything in the classroom was wet, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> they tried a variety of things and they had difficulty like making the experiment fail. Um, we've been talking about how scientists fail a lot of the times in the experiments they're trying to do and how we have to be willing to fail. Um, but they were having trouble failing. So <laughs> they had a lot of success with that experiment and a lot of fun. So that was our first property of air. I don't know if I mentioned that, but we're going over the properties of air this week. So the first one we talked about was air taking up space. So by doing the pop bottle and balloon experiment and also by doing the cup with paper and water. So two good experiments that you could do in your classroom if you have to teach the properties of air. Anyway, I am looking forward to going home. I have to stop at the post office. I have like several returns <laughs> that I need to make. Um, but after that, I'm going to go home. I have quite a bit of planning that I would really like to get done. 
and oh, I just feel like there's a lot on my plate. I got back into like working out this weekend. I worked out on Saturday, went for a run on Sunday. I was feeling really good. I'm like, okay, I need to stick with the schedule, but there's just so much to do. And I am someone who always makes time for exercise. Like I take my dog for a 5k walk before school and often a walk in the evening. And we went for like a two kilometer walk at lunch today. Like it's a whole thing. Like I get exercise, but I would love to get back into routine of like strength training. There's just, there's just a lot. Like I just don't have enough time right now. And I'm looking forward to being in a place where I have enough understanding of the curriculum that it takes me less time to like prepare for every day. But I'm worried that I won't get there till next year, which is like a devastating thought. Anyway, I think I have enough footage from today. You're likely sick of hearing my voice. I should be able to connect with you tomorrow. Um, so yeah, I will see you when I see you. Hey you guys, what's up? It is the end of the day on Tuesday and it's the first opportunity I have to speak with you today, but I thought I'd give you a quick little update before I go home. We had a pretty quick day because it's raining outside. So it was indoor recess and I always just find indoor recess makes the time pass pretty quickly. Anyway, it was a good day overall. Um, we had library today, the kids had French today, we had gym today, there was a lot going on. So it did help the day to go by quickly. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> anyway, um, a couple things that we did today. We started off our day with a cute little check-in. I love just doing like fun things that get everyone sharing, everybody talking. So last night, my husband and my puppy and I, we went and got ice cream. We went to Dairy Queen and got blizzards. And I noticed that they had like several new blizzards on their menu. So I just put a picture of the new blizzards up on the smart board and we went around the class and everyone said what their like ideal blizzard was or what their order would be if we were going to Dairy Queen in that moment. So it was just kind of nice to get everybody up and chatting. And it takes about like three minutes. So those ones are really great. I'm always up for those little icebreakers. And then we got into some math. So one of my favorite ways to just do some mental math in the morning is to put a few questions up on the board and it was kind of fun today because I put two digit by two digit multiplication and three digit by one digit division which are both grade five outcomes I put some of those questions up on the board and some of the kids were like I don't remember how to do this and it was like extra fun because I was their grade five teacher so I was you know pretend getting mad at them like you can't forget what I taught you and anyway it did show me that we need to spend quite a bit of time on those kinds of problems so I think probably what I will do for the next however long is needed. <laughs> so I will have those kinds of problems up on the board in the morning and we will review those probably for a couple of weeks. It's not like my math block necessarily. It's usually about 15 minutes, but I love that it kind of covers that mental math um, outcome and there's not too much planning that goes into it. My favorite way to kind of incorporate a little bit more, take it the next step further, is to have, once the kids are done of the problems, they put a star next to one or multiple of the problems that they would feel comfortable solving on the board. And then I will ask a student to go up, solve it, and as they're solving it, they have to verbalize what they're doing. So if they're doing a two digit by two digit multiplication problem, then they're saying, okay, I'm gonna multiply three times two, because I'm multiplying the ones as my first step. Three times two is six, so I'm gonna put the six here. So they go over the steps, but they talk through their thinking. And that way, if there is someone sitting kind of in the audience or in the class who doesn't know what step to do or what where they got an answer from, they can follow along. Um, and it also is a great way to have kids using proper vocabulary. So if they do make a mistake or call something the wrong thing, I can kind of pause and say, remember when we're doing this, we call that number this. And anyway, so we did that really quickly in the morning. And then I printed off, this was like several years ago now, but I printed off 18 authors purpose kind of articles, types of writing, um, just a variety. So there's letters to the editor, there's instructions, there's notes, there's a narrative, there are facts, um, research papers, that kind of thing. So everything is just one page that I printed off, but there's 18 of them. So the students traveled around in groups. We just did the first seven today. They traveled around with their group. They read through the piece that they were, that was at their table. And then they had to, to determine whether the author 
author's purpose would have been to persuade, inform, or entertain. So that's what we did for that portion of language arts today. We also are starting a new spelling program. So the way that we structured that for today was just like a whole group activity. They got whiteboards. I said a word. So for example, I said the word money and then I would call out what is the initial sound and we would all say mm, and then I said what is the ending sound and we all said E. And then I would say, okay, now you have to write a word on your whiteboard that has the same initial sound or the same ending sound. And just a fun way to think about sounds. And it was interesting because when we got to the word table, my students as sixth graders had a lot of trouble with the word table because they're picturing it in their mind as T-A-B-L-E. But then when I said, what is the ending sound? They said, there is no ending sound or some of them said that but they were thinking that the ending letter is E and it's a silent E in that word, so it doesn't make a sound, but really the ending sound is L. So anyway, it was kind of an interesting little observation, but our spelling program this year is more focused on phonemic awareness than actual spelling. So we will be working on that. I should call it a literacy program and not a spelling program. Um, we grabbed our, we had library when we were in the library, we grabbed our religion textbooks. Something I love doing when we first kind of get a textbook is just putting together a quick, um, textbook scavenger hunt. So I did that in religion. I just made this myself by flipping through the textbook and that way you can point out anything that you kind of need the kids to know, especially for the first couple of units that you're going to do. Um, and it also is just a fun way to have them turning the pages, making observations, looking around. I also sent my remind note home today. I'm not going to show you because it has my code on there. Um, but I have not done remind for several years. If you're not familiar with re what remind is, it's just like an educational commun communication app. Um, it really doesn't need to be used for education, I wouldn't say, but I think it mainly is. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but the way it works is that you're able to message parents like via text message and the parents don't get your phone number and you don't get their phone number. So it does still respect privacy. I tried it a couple of years ago and I didn't love that I just felt like it kind of invaded on some boundaries. I personally like email because I just find it to be a little bit more professional. Um, and because I only have my email on my computer, that is a choice I've made. I cannot have it on my phone. It's not good for my mental health. So I have it on my computer. And that way, if I want to check my email, I have to go onto my computer. Um, whereas now I am going to have things popping up on my phone sometimes. But I also am just facing a reality where I do know and believe and recognize that most people use text messaging and that is just something, it's kind of the best way to get in touch with people today. So I did have plenty of parents last year who never respond to emails. I wasn't sure if they were getting my emails. And this way, if you want to sign up for Remind, they are able to get all these communications straight to their phone. And it allows me, instead of sending like a long email, to just send quick quick little bits of information. It will not replace email in my classroom. I would still like to use email for the longer information things, but I could that way send a remind that says, hey, I sent you a long email. Can you make sure you read it by Thursday? Or something like that. Um, if we had like a big field trip coming up or there was like a big test or something happened in the classroom, whatever the case may be, um, it just allows me to send like a quick little message to parents and the same for parents. You are able to set your office hours and things like that. So, um, you know, parents would recognize that like perhaps I wouldn't be replying to their texts later in the evening and that kind of thing. Anyway, I decided I have taught these kids for a couple of years, almost all of them. And I felt, I feel like safe with their families and with communication. So I thought this would be a good year to try it. And then if I do have some difficulty with it this year, like I can always delete it, scrap it, move on. So I'm not gonna let it stress me out too much. We did do a science demonstration this afternoon about air um, having weight or having mass. Um, it didn't go exactly as I planned, so I'm not going to share it with you because I don't need to share something with you that failed. Um, but I will absolutely freely admit that it totally failed and it wasn't a great demonstration. So I need to kind of go back to the drawing board and process that a little bit. Um, the kids stuck with me and they were like, yes, air does have weight. <laughs> but... I don't really know how they got that information because my demonstration was not it. Anyway, I am going to head home and it's raining. So I don't know what my evening's going to look like. Hopefully the sun will kind of peek out and I can at least go for a nice walk, which would benefit me and Summit. 
but we'll see. I do want to rest. I also said I'm going to try to put together like a USB with some of my grade five resources for one of our new five teachers. And that is like actually going to help me so much because I need to get my things organized. Um, we're going to get new computers relatively soon and my computer is a disaster. So I would like to compile my grade five resources and compile my grade six resources and then actually have them somewhere like more tangible and more organized so I can actually find what I am looking for. Anyway, that is absolutely it for me for today. Tomorrow is like a an insane day so it would shock me if I am able to check in with you then but if I am I will be here and if not I will catch you on Thursday oh my goodness you guys I was just <laughs> laughing because I needed to genuinely flip back and like rewatch some of my last footage in order to figure out when I last spoke with you because I am failing this week with vlogging and it is not for lack of trying. It is honestly just sometimes your schedule is just overwhelmed. And for me, that was Wednesday, Thursday this week. So whatever, here I am. It is a Friday. I am so sorry. I have a lot that I want to share with you from the past couple days. Um, I'm in a bit of a rush this morning because we have prayer in a few minutes and I don't want to miss that but I thought I would pick up the camera anyway say hi touch base again let you know I have not forgotten about you and we're having a really good week I've been in a good mood this week it has been loud in my classroom if you have any noise regulating tips I need them in the comments below I remember that about the beginning of the year last year too and even just last year in general so I knew that about this group, but there are times when like I'm trying to have a conversation with someone who is right in front of me and we can't hear each other and I just lose my mind. Yesterday I said to them, I was like, boys and girls, if any of you have like a suggestion of what we could do in here to manage the volume, I need those suggestions because I don't understand how it gets this loud. And my concern is that like kids aren't yelling across the classroom, like it's all like amicable like friendly chatting like it's not loud in because of like negativity but the kids are in groups and they're trying to talk with somebody who's sitting either next to them or across from them and I don't know why but the volume just goes up and up holy so we need to figure that out um, I am going to do something today actually where I'm going to offer them I believe 20 minutes outside at the end of the day, but anytime I need to speak to them about volume today, I'm going to take two minutes off of that. So that's my strategy for today. But if you have any like tried and true methods that have worked for you, like let me know in the comments below, especially for this age level, like, you know, it's, it's different. Like the strategies you need at this level are different than the younger kids. Anyway, I got Starbucks this morning. And yesterday, yesterday I like ultimate treat, like pumpkin spice latte this morning. I just got like a regular coffee. It is like not hot though, but I noticed that about Starbucks. I'm somebody who like, I really like my coffee to be hot, but I noticed that about Starbucks is their drinks are never like really hot. I don't know. Do you notice that too? Or is that just like my location? Who knows? Anyway, we have a busy day today. Today is one of those days where we have like gym, music, French. I teach grade one health. We have to finish up a religion art project from yesterday. We are going to write a um, math test, like a math assessment at the beginning of the year. It's called the MIPI, um, very popular here in Alberta, but we are going to do that today. Unless for some reason, like if I have like five kids who aren't here, but I'm almost positive no matter what, I want to get that done because then I could do some marking over the weekend. I say that now, who knows what will truly happen. Uh, anyway, I am going to go heat up my coffee um, and jump into the chapel for prayer. So I honestly, I think I might actually be able to speak with you at some point today, but I don't know. My life is like just crazy right now. So if not, I will definitely close out the vlog after school and kind of take you on a little bit of a tour of the room and show you a couple things that we've been up to and a few things actually that I've added to the classroom. So it has been a super productive week. I am happy. I'm in a good mood. Things are rolling. I just honestly need like a body cam or something so that you can see what we're 
doing because it is hard to find the time to stop and chat. But I do appreciate you sticking here with me and I hope you are having a great day. Hello, we survived, made it to the end of the day. I thought I might be able to chat with you at recess, but it just didn't work out. There was just a lot. On those days when you have like all the specialists, I just find it's even crazier than when you have your kids in your classroom. Anyway, I will tell you about two things that I feel like maybe are ideas you could bring in your classroom because one of my goals on my channel is always to share like useful tips. But anyway, the first one was kind of a fun game we played today, or I don't know if it would be called a game, but it could be used in your literacy block. And I always use it kind of for sentence writing as well as, as like idea generation. So we all stood in a circle and I had a big foam ball and I started by saying the, and then I threw the ball to somebody. And when they caught it, they had to say the next word. And then they threw it, somebody else said the next word. And we were creating a story all together as a class. And it's really interesting to see how they come up with ideas. So idea generation, and then I would say also coming up with like relevant ideas because you always have students who have trouble staying on topic in their writing. And this was very obvious. Like we were talking about a wolf. There was a wolf in our story and eventually somebody said gorilla. And it was kind of like, wait a second, when did we introduce a gorilla? And is does this make sense as a time to introduce another character? And we kind of agreed, no, we haven't introduced a gorilla yet. And right now would not be the time. We're still talking about the wolf. So we had those conversations. Um, I think it would be really cute to do in the younger grades, but my kids even said, what if we did this every so often and we just got better and better at it until the end of the year, if we could pass the ball really quick and write a quick story. So I, I liked that idea. I thought it would be a lot of fun and really good for those kids who aren't as good with paper and pencil and they need to be like active in their learning. So this was exciting because they're waiting to see if the ball gets passed to them and then coming up with the next idea. So that was really fun. We did it for about 20 minutes, which I would say was like a good amount of time. The other thing I wanted to share was this. This was a religion project we worked on this week in general. Um, our One of our kind of introductory topics that I kind of latched onto was the wonder that is in the world. So in the natural world. And then we also talked about the wonder that's in people. So our character traits, our personality traits, um, the way that we look and some features that people have that we're really drawn to. So I had the kids brainstorm a list. Their first list was natural world. They made a t-chart and their first list was natural world, things that they find beauty in, in nature. And then their second list was about people, things that they are drawn to in people. And I said, you know what? It's okay to put certain things. I, my example was like, if somebody has little freckles across their cheeks and you think that that's really cute when people have that, right? Freckles. And then I had also said, if you're more drawn to people who have a bubbly personality, then write that. So we had talked about character traits as well as personality. I would never want somebody to make only a list of what people actually look like. Um, so instead of talking about just like our physical characteristics, I really wanted them to focus on, oh, I'm drawn to people who are honest and kind and trustworthy. Um, but we also tried to come up with some unique traits. Anyway, in the end, the project that we kind of worked up to was, um, the word wonder. So I gave them the letters. I cut them out with our Ellison machine that we use for bulletin boards and they traced, I cut them out on card, card stock and I cut out six sets. So that way we could pass them around the room. They traced the letters for wonder on here. And then inside each letter, they had to draw some of the things that were on their list. Most of the kids stuck with their ideas from the natural world. Um, so I did have a lot, even when I'm looking at my backboard, a lot of sunsets, rainbows. Um, some people were really drawn to like rainy days because they love the sound of the rain, um, mountains, forests, flowers, gardens. So we had lots of those ideas and that's totally okay because I would say more of the ideas surrounded the natural world. But I did also, I think anytime you think about wonder and beauty, it's really important to talk about the beauty that we have within ourselves as people as well. So I just kind of snuck that in there too. Um, 
but I know that our superficial idea of beauty is always about what's on the outside. And I do think that that matters. We care about what we look like and how we do our hair and how we dress and some of the traits that we're really proud of. So we did talk about that as well, that it's okay to think that you have beautiful hair. It's okay to think that your your eyes sparkle and people are probably drawn to those things, your smile, that kind of stuff. So I didn't want to totally negate that because that's just a real like a reality check for us, but I really wanted to focus more on character traits, personality traits that we are drawn to in other people and then the whole aspect of like the natural world creating wonder. So it was the idea that God creates wonder in our world and this was kind of the little art project that was kind of culminating to our main idea in religion this week. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, something like that, I think obviously not everyone teaches at a Catholic school and not everyone has this main idea that I'm talking about, but even that as an art project where the kids, I was actually thinking if you just um, cut out a bunch of letters and they did it for their name it would be a really cool like beginning of the year art activity where they trace their name and then inside their name the letters of their name they draw things about themselves I was thinking that would be a really cool thing to do so I may do something like that um, at some point because I really liked the way this turned out and it looks really cool I don't want to show you everyone's because there are some names and things but um, it looks really cool on our create board with everybody's art project there the other thing I did do, let me just kick my tripod up. I put together our collaborative Canadian flag and I had shared about that in my vlog last week. I just hadn't had the chance to laminate it and put it together yet. So I did that today. Um, I had actually put it together on the weekend, but then the laminator was out of lamination and that's kept in the office. It was a whole thing. So I laminated it um, this morning, cut it out. It's up on the wall, good to go. And I did a little bit of organizing around the classroom. Um, I was able to finally label the white bins up front. Um, I give my kids these little white bins. This one's empty. And then I just had these little um, chalkboard labels that I stuck on the outside. But at the first day of school, it's just one of those like cute things where I let the kids come up and pick their own bin. And it's a big deal, right? Get anything to like make them feel like they are a part of the classroom is a big deal and it's important. So they come up, they pick their bin and the spot they want their bin to go. And then they tape their name on their bin. And then I say, always say like, over time, I will put a label on your bin. So I got, I think over half of them done today. So I do plan on coming in on the weekend for a little bit and that may be a task I end up being able to finish. But um, if not, no big deal, I can tackle that next week. It's always nice to have a few little tasks that you can do around the classroom if the kids um, are working on something. So today, for example, they were working on their MIPI and um, that was that big math test I was telling you about. So they had to do that. And at the, like, there's very little I can kind of help them on because the whole point of doing it is that I figure out where they're at with math. So if I'm helping all of them and supporting them, then it's not the same. So I do answer some questions. Obviously I'm not just not <laughs> helping at all. I answer some questions and reword a couple things, but overall, um, I don't help too much because I really want to get a good glimpse at where they're at at this time of year in math. So I got lots of that done while they were writing their MIPI and I am I have the pile out on my desk to make sure I put it in my backpack and take it with me and get some marking done like while I'm watching TV or something this weekend. Um, I always like to do my marking at home so I can kind of get spread out. <laughs> But yeah, that was it. Um, I don't know how this vlog is going to turn out. I feel like I always say that at the end of these week long vlogs because it's just like little, you know, pick up the camera here and there, share random bits of things. And sometimes I feel like it doesn't come together, but I do hope that always that you're able to take something from the vlogs that um, you can either connect with me on and feel like you're not alone as a teacher or genuinely bring an idea back to your classroom. We did do one more science experiment today too about suction. So they had a cup that was a quarter full of water and they put um, a piece of cardstock on top. And then when they flipped it and held it slightly, then they moved their hand away and created suction. So that was a study about um, air having pressure. So every, um, I didn't get through as many as I wanted. I think we did four this week and I had wanted to do five, but that's okay. Um, we did have an early dismissal on Wednesday, so I kind of decided not to do one on Wednesday, but we're talking about the properties of air. So getting through those definitely by the end of next week. We have meet the teacher next week and I will have more cross country running, which I love doing with the kids. 
and it is a full five day week next week, I believe, which this week was a full five days, but Wednesday was an early dismissal, which sometimes it feels like it's even longer than five days, <laughs> but it does help a little bit um, for some people in your kind of perspective on the week. But next week is like straight up five days in the classroom. Um, I'm also in charge of the Terry Fox run at my school. So this weekend I will be putting together Terry Fox resources and sending that email out to all of my staff so that they have some things they can do in their classroom next week leading up to our Terry Fox run on Friday morning. So that will be something to look forward to as well. Anyway, that is it from me for this week. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you did, please give it a thumbs up because it truly supports me and my channel here on YouTube. I am so grateful that you stuck it around this long and followed me along. If you would like to stick around for the rest of my journey, make sure you hit that red subscribe button and I will see you in my next video.